Would you like to become a fascinating personality, break free from plateaus, and gain power over your mental resources and your full potential? You came to the right place. Welcome to a magical journey to yourself. This show is made in Germany. If you like the show, please subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or PureMindMagic.club. Welcome to Season 1, Shaping Your Reality. And here is your host, international magician, speaker, and book author, Victoria Mavis. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Pure Mind Magic and December 22nd of the Advent Calendar that has no calories but only makes you smarter. My guest today on the show is Denise Hughes Levis. She is a fictional author and created already a lot of fantasy books for children and young adults. She also writes screenplays and knows pretty well how to create a fantasy story in your mind and then bring it to paper, including all the character development, the plot, and everything you have to keep an eye on to create a complete fictional story or book. So we will discuss this today and hopefully you get some amazing tips out of it. Maybe you decided to create your own fiction book next year. Who knows? In case you are a fan of podcasts, I have a last minute Christmas gift tip for you. You can get my podcast listening journal. And because it's really last minute before Christmas, you can grab the digital version of it for your Kindle and download it directly. So there will be a link in the show notes. And you can, of course, also get a hard copy of the podcast listening journal so you can sit down with pen and paper to track everything you are listening to because when you are like me and listening to podcasts all the time it's sometimes really tough to keep track on what you heard where and what link you would wanted to check out and what you have to research and what you would like to recommend. So with that, you keep all your notes in just one place and really can look it up after. So now let's start the interview with Denise Hughes Levis and let's dive into the fantasy world of books because I think this is now the perfect time of the year to talk about these fictional stories during Christmas because Christmas is full of stories and magical moments and when you look at all the Christmas movies there is so much wonder and mystery included and dreams come true. So let's dive into this world where everything is possible. Here is for you, Denise Use Levis. Hi, Denise. How are you today? Well, I'm fine. Thanks, Victoria. Denise, before we started this interview, you told me where you are. Can you once describe again the beautiful place you are at the moment? I live in Bend, Oregon, which is in the central part of the state of Oregon in the United States. And we're in a high desert here, but we're surrounded by lakes and mountains and forests. So it's a sportsman's wonderland here. You can do anything on the water, in the mountains, skiing, hiking, bicycling. It's a wonderful place to come to live. Mm, that sounds to me like a magical place. So you get everything at once and then you only have to make the decision what to do. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Denise, uh, what made you become an author? When I was in the eighth grade, we had to write a short story and I wrote it and I thought, well, this is something very interesting. I think maybe I'll do this when I get older. I just didn't realize how fast that would happen. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been um, an imaginative person. And because I lived a very kind of sheltered life, my life was, was in my imagination. 
That is amazing. And I think listening to J.K. Rowling, the author of Harry Potter, who once said, I think it was a talk she gave at Harvard, where she said that Imagination really is the key for everything. So what is your take on that by writing fantasy books? Well, you really have to use your imagination if you're writing fantasy. I do a lot of research anyway on animals and locations and things like that. But in order to make up a fantastic story that's in a different place, something that is not known to you know, normal average people, you really have to put yourself in a different place in your mind and uh, use your imagination to create these worlds. Mm, I really like that because, you know, the podcast all around mindset, that is very key what you have said there. So Denise, how do you trigger your creativity to come up with these ideas and this new worlds no one has ever seen before? Well, I started by taking a writing course quite a long time ago. They used to have in um, the United States, they used to have TV guides, guides for television. And it, and there was a, a thing in there that said, do you want to write for children? Take this test. So I ended up taking some writing courses for children. And that's how it started as far as my imagination. I just can't stop my imagination. Everything intrigues me, whether it's a cloud or a shape in a rock or a mud puddle that has a rainbow in it. My mind just wants to go to a different place and wonder where that came from, who lives there and what's happening. Amazing. So Denise, what would be your advice when someone wants to start out also creating fiction books or screenplays? How do you start? You need to take classes and learn how to write. Um, the screenwriting, uh, poetry writing, writing books for children, Uh, writing short stories, all of those have a specific form, a specific way to do it. They're all stories. They all have a beginning, a middle, and an end. But there is a specific format for each of the genres, and you need to know how to do that. And the best way is to take classes in college, take them in high school, take them in school, take them online, um, get into a writing group. There are many, many ways, and there is a lot of free information on the internet to learn how to do it if you are limited with your finances. Yeah, that makes sense. So, Denise, it's also when it comes to writing, I think most people are like you, and they are telling themselves that one day they become an author, and one day they write their book, and one day almost always never comes, we know. So, When you decide to really start and sit down and write, we all know that a book has more than three pages. What is your best advice on to like be consistent, maybe having some writing retools to really stay in the process and bring the book to an end? Every author or every writer has a different way of approaching it. I am not a normal writer because when I write, I do a lot of rewriting as I go along. So that by the time I'm finished with a book, it's not in a first draft stage. It's gone through a lot of drafts in the process. Some people just write straight through a book and then go back and revise. So everyone has a different method and you really have to find out what works for you and what is the best way for you to do that. Yeah, that makes sense. And Denise, it's also that nowadays it's easier to become an author and publish your book because there is this world of self-publishing now. Because a few years ago, it was like you had to find a big publisher and was most of the time quite difficult to get one and get the contract and get the promotion and the deal and everything. But today it's possible like in one or two hours, you can turn into an author by uploading your self-published book onto Amazon. So where do you see the big advantages of self-publishing? 
things have really changed since I started writing. And I think self-publishing is a wonderful thing for anybody who would like to see their own book in their own hands. However, the decision has to be made as to why are you publishing your book? Are you publishing because you want to hold a book? You want to give a copy to your relatives? If you want to use it, a book for uh, an occupation and become a best-selling author, then there is a lot more involved because you also have to learn how to market your book. Yeah, that brings us to another very important point. And I think, Denise, because you have already published a couple of books, you made your experiences with marketing. So what would be like your secret tips to improve marketing and really get your book out into the world? I think you need help if you're not willing to put the work in to learn how to market. Mm -hmm. Because it, uh, most writers are very creative people, and they, most of the ones I know, they don't want to market. Marketing is like learning a whole new career. And in order to do that, you either have to dig in and learn how to do it yourself, or you have to get help from the experts who know what they're doing. There's a lot of also a lot of free information on how to to do that if you have the time. My problem was that I spent I spend so much time writing that I don't really I don't really like to market. And unfortunately, you have to do that if you want to be a published writer and you want to actually use it as a career. So I ended up um hiring a marketing team and that's where I am in my career at the moment. Nice. I think that's really a good idea and you have this 100% energy and ha you have to decide where to focus it and you are right. So most people are either creative or they are very good at marketing, selling things, but it's very seldom that someone is good and really likes both fields. So also about the genre Denise, it's very interesting to have someone here on the podcast who is writing this fiction and fantasy because I had a lot of authors already talking about nonfiction books, what I think gets more and more interesting today as well. But where do you see the big difference in writing fiction and writing nonfiction? Well, I think nonfiction is, and this is as it relates to children, because that's what I'm more, uh, I write for children. So I pay attention to what's going on in the market in nonfiction for children too. And in nonfiction, it's gotten a lot different than it used to be. There's much more entertainment involved in a nonfiction book for children now. Um, so you have to be factual, but you can also entertain and you also can make your book a lot more fun to read for children. Um, and that's the growth that I see in the nonfiction market for children. And I'm really happy about that because I think that if you entertain, then you can capture the imagination of a child and you can teach them in ways that that aren't just didactic and tell you this is what you should believe or this is how you should feel. It, there's just a a much better way of writing nonfiction and fiction that can allow the imagination of a children to of a child to grow and um and still keep them entranced and excited about what you're writing yeah i think i i got it so when it comes to fiction for uh, children as well as for adults i think there is this big part of creating characters and when we look at tv series it's very complicated whenever you add another character because when you have let's say character a and b you have a connection between a and b but as soon as you add character c to the equation you have a connection between a and b about a and c B and C, and it gets more complicated the more characters, of course, you add, and everyone has a relation to the other character. So how do you deal with that? And when you come up with the story, do you have like a huge whiteboard with post-its everywhere? Or what is your approach on creating characters and relating them to each other? 
I wouldn't necessarily recommend my way of doing it to everybody because I keep so much of it in my head. Um, but one of the important things is you can make a sheet, a character sheet for every character. And you don't have you can make it as long as you, you can have a, you know, a 60 page character development sheet if you want. I use one sheet which talks about you know, who they are, I give them traits, and the traits are personality traits that I give them, whether they're physical or mental or emotional, they have to conflict with the other characters, and then they have to sometimes agree with the other characters. You can't have a perfect character character that never gets into trouble, that, that is a sweet and angelic, because they have to have something else that gives them interest. We're not perfectly angelic beings. So if you create a character, your second character has to have some compl conflicting um, mannerisms, conflicting ideas, so that you have conflict. Because if you don't have conflict, you don't have a story. Of course, and then it's boring. And it's people want to see how the character deals with all the challenges that come up. So, Denise, we already touched on imagination and how you come up with your ideas, but what would you say might be some good exercise, exercises to train your imagination? Well, the best way is to become an observer and look at everything around you. There are ideas no matter where you look whether it's in a painting, whether it's in, like I said, a mud puddle, whether it's in a tree, whether it's in the sky. Uh, there are just so many ways, and it's so exciting just to think about. Um, I'm trying to there, – there are some cards called fiction magic that give you an idea, just one word, and it, they can help you and inspire you for getting ideas as to where to take your writing. There's a wonderful book called The Magic of Fiction. It's a nonfiction book about the types of writing having to do with alliterations and metaphors. And it's wonderful. And it gives you a different insight into how you can put your words together to make them sound different than anybody else's. Wow, I never heard this before. That sounds like a magic trick. And it's very good that there's also magic involved in the title. So yes. that, that sounds good, yeah. You can find those cards and the books on Amazon, I think. They're, I mean, they're not mine, but I just love them. And they're, they help people um, get in, inspired for what they might want to write about. Or if you get stuck. Now, I, I don't really believe in writer's block, although I know people, some people do. I just think that sometimes you come to points in your writing where you're not sure what happens next. So I'll go walk my dog or I'll just skip to another part or think or skip to another piece of writing because I don't write just one thing at a time usually. And and so then it allows my creative mind to be working on the problem when I'm working on something else. And then I go back to it. So I don't really like to think of blocks. I'm writing a sequel to one of my books now. And I, I know how it begins. I know what happens During the story, I know how it ends, but I came to a point where, okay, what do I do now? Because I didn't have specifics involved one step at a time. And so then I will sit down and think and then decide, okay, what is needed? What do the characters need? How will I um, add something that's going to develop the problems with the main character? And the more you think and the more you contemplate, the more ideas will come to you. And usually ideas for me will come when I'm doing something entirely different. If I'm washing the dishes or like I said, walking my dog, doing, taking a shower. It's very frustrating to get ideas in the shower because I don't ever have a pencil and paper there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should have. I just read a book and it was uh, advised there that you put some uh, waterproof notepad in the shower so that you can uh, jot down all your ideas because I, I know exactly what you're talking about. So I experienced that I come up with the best ideas in the sauna because I'm then so relaxed and just like uh, unplugged there that it's very easy for my mind to enter this creative state and come up with new ideas for new illusions, new stories, new books, and yeah, uh, be ready to make it happen. 
Yes, well, that's a great idea. <laughs> so you should uh, do your homework, right, Denise? And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and change your shower for all the inspiration that is hitting you there. So you well, never know. <laughs> what happens is I end up having very short showers and then I have to run downstairs and get a pencil and paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that. So, Denise, another thing, you addressed the writer's block already, and I'm glad you hadn't to deal with it so far. And I think there's a thing that so many people carry this wish around of becoming an author and writing the book. And besides progressing it, there is a thing that I think it's difficult when they work a nine to five job and very attached there or with their own business. What is your advice on like getting in the zone of writing and really cut off your day, your routine and being ready to sit down and come up with something completely new and something completely different? I think it's important to set some time every day to write, even if it's only 10 minutes. I've read of people who they they write on the bus, they they get up before their kids get up in the morning or they wait until their children are in bed at night is to just find minutes because 10 minutes every day will add up and you need to really exercise your writing skills every day because the more you do, the better you get. That is so true. And maybe Denise, can you come up for us with three action steps, what you could do tomorrow to get started in becoming an author? Well, first you have to have the idea for the story. Then you have to make some time, even if it's only a short amount of time every day to write. And then you have to be disciplined and not get off your schedule. Because self-discipline is the, the thing that you need the most if you really want to write. There isn't going to be anyone that tells you, you know, Oh, go write your book. There's not going to be any whip over your head saying, write your book. It has to be a passion that you have within yourself so that you care enough about what you think and what you feel that you want to put it on paper in words. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. And that are good tips to get started and really make it happen and get it out of your Head, because I think a lot of people walking around with a book in their head, but that doesn't help to really get it out and get it published. So, Denise, I mentioned that you have already written a couple of books. Can you pick maybe some titles for us and tell us where we can buy them? You can buy all of them on Amazon, whether they're in, you can do digital ones or paperback books. Uh, I know I have a list somewhere. Um, <laughs> Hijinx Quest 1 and Hijinx Quest 2 are chapter books um, about the adventures of two wizards who come to our world and have to, they, they get stuck in our world and they have to come back and enlist the, the help of two children to go to the 10 most famous, wonderful, natural wonders of the world and bring some magic back with them so they can get back home. Dragon Cloud is a story about a young dragon who goes to Earth to retrieve a magic pearl, and he kidnaps a teenage boy and his younger sister and enlists their help in saving Earth and his own world. And uh, My Fairy God Monster is a humorous modern fantasy, a Cinderella story about a girl who becomes a Cinderella in her own home and copes with a brat a rat, a cat, and a cool fairy god monster with a magic whip. The young adult novel is called Enchantress Sacrifice. A forbidden birth creates an enchantress, and when her mother is murdered, she's hidden underground for 16 years and then is expected to save the island, even though she will be killed on sight. All of these books have wonderful adventurous stories in them, but they also have learning experiences for the reader who's reading them. They always touch on sacrifice, fear, 
personal responsibility, things that, that we all face every day in our lives. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I also heard the word a magic couple of times. So sounds really interesting to me. So I will put the links in the show notes that people can find your books and uh, read all the stories. And is there also a way, Denise, for the listeners to connect with you? Maybe some of them have more questions about becoming an author or might be interested in being coached by you, anything like that. What place could they go? They can go to my website, www.denisehugheslewis.com. And then you can find the titles of the books. And I'm also an editor, or you can ask me questions. I'll be happy to answer them. I love to, to talk with other people who are interested in writing. Sounds really good. And maybe to wrap it up, can you explain and make it clear what exactly an editor does? An editor is like a mentor and a guide for a writer. We end up as writers being way too close to our own work and we don't see the mistakes. We don't see the things that are left out because the whole story is in our head and we may not have put it on the page. So an editor helps fill in the holes or gaps if there are any besides checking for grammar, story, plot holes, um, all that kind of stuff. I do all of it. I, I, I read everything for periods and commas and quotes and all that, and also the format, as well as the story and the plot and whether everything is working together and what may need to be uh, added or subtracted. Mm, nice. That was a really good description of it. So, Denise, any final words of wisdom and ins inspiration you have for our audience? Well, I have a quote. It's, it's a little bit long, but I think it really sums up, up what books are. This is by Carl Sagan. A book is made from a tree. It is an assemblage of flat, flexible parts imprinted with dark, pigmented squiggles. One glance at it and you hear the voice of another person, perhaps someone dead for thousands of years. Across the millennia, the author is speaking clearly and silently silently inside your head, directly to you. Writing is perhaps the greatest of human inventions, binding together people, citizens of distant epochs who never knew one another. Books break the shackles of time, proof that humans can work magic. Nice. And you ended with the word magic. I never heard that before. That's really nice. And I'm a big fan of books. So I have a ton of books at home and I love reading because I still believe there is some magic around books, reading them, writing them, just everything around it. And I love to hang out in the library to be around all this wisdom that is there and all this lifelong experiences people have put into a book. So what would you say, Denise? I agree fully with you. I like this. Um, Sidney Sheldon had this quote, there is magic, but you have to be the magician. You have to make the magic happen. And that's what we do as writers. And that's what you do as a magician. You're right. So fantastic last words. Thank you so much, Denise, for inspiring my listeners today and being on pure mind magic. That was really magical advice today, I have to say. So let's stay in touch and keep writing. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks again for listening to Pure Mind Magic and today's episode with Denise Hughes Levis. Hope you enjoyed it. And remember, if you like, just grab your copy of the podcast listening journal that I created under my real name, JSR. The link will be directly in the show notes. Tomorrow, we hit already December 20. Third, and for that, my guest on the show will be Linda West. She's the author of the book, The Frequency. 
And as it describes, it all has to do with frequencies. So we will discuss on how to manifest with vibrations and finding the right frequencies of your desires, of all the things you would like to have. She explains us how we can understand frequencies. And also we touch on the secrets behind the secrets that we're never told. Linda West is really good about dating and everything around love issues so we will talk about that as well and of course some hot tips on how you can raise your frequency i think this is just a good point now for christmas to get in this high frequency state and being grateful for everything you already have in your life so this will be the episode tomorrow or for today until then create some magic 